What's up guys? I'm going to show you guys how to do some uh, jQuery. So if you don't know shit about jQuery, then now's a really good time to watch. Um, I'm, I got my uh, do work folder here because we're going to do a lot of work on jQuery right now. I'm going to open it up. It's just a basic HTML template here. Open that in your favorite text editor. Mine's Coda. Some badass. Blow the text up so you can see it. Let's uh... My CSS folder, I got some CSS, some images in there. So, let's uh, do some jQuery. First thing you're going to do is go to jQuery.com. Maybe. So you can download this production version right here. And you can, once you download it, you'd place it in a JavaScript folder, which I'm going to call JS, and do work folder. So in here, you, you'd put that file in here. Or that's only if you want to do local do it locally. We're gonna do it the cool way. And we're gonna to go to uh, jQuery Let's type in jQuery Google and Google and you'll get a Google library here. We're gonna click on that and then right here we're gonna click on jQuery and we're gonna get the great jQuery library. And we're gonna select this guy, the the minified version. So it's compressed, so it's not as big. So once you grab that, we're going to put it at the end of our body right here. So let's do a script. Script type equals text slash JavaScript. And the source equals whatever you just copy and paste it. Then you're going to end that with the script. And then we're going to do another script, which I'm going to cheat because I already have a snippet for it. So we're going to do another script type, type text JavaScript, and we're going to give that source of a new file that we're going to create right now. So in our JavaScript folder, we're going to make a new file in there called main.js. There it is. So we're going to go from in here, we're at our index page right now, we're going to tell it to go inside the JavaScript folder and get the main.js. So JavaScript folder main.js and we have our jQuery loaded so let's test that out and make sure it's running so we're going to go to our main.js and we're going to start doing some jQuery so here's how you start jQuery a function you want to end that with a semicolon and in here we're going to do work so what do you want to do first that's uh do an alert just to make sure everything's running working so when you open this page an alert should pop up and say working alright JavaScript's working awesome so if we go to review source right here if you click on that link it should bring you to the Google library so the advantage of having this versus have in your JS folder a local version of this. Many people visit this uh, link every day, so people will cache this link. So it, it just runs faster off the Google servers rather than your own website. So this, all this fucking code right here will load way faster by Google than your local server or whatever. So just know that's faster, it's better. Just use it. And also, it has 6.4 there. Uh, the version, if you just put 1.6, it will actually grab whatever's the latest version. So if you put 1.64 right now, and then 1.65 comes out tomorrow, it, I mean, if you just do this, you'll always have the latest version. Alrighty. So, in our do work, let's delete this, and we'll do a, let's get a variable here. We'll do a var date equals um, a new date 
and we'll grab the year. Seems kind of weird. It's not very complex at all. Just deal with me here. Get full year. All right. So now we have this variable. This variable is called date, and right now it equals 2011 because the get full year. That's what year is right now. So we're going to alert date our variable date and see what pops up 2011 all right cool because that's what javascript's doing it gets the date from the javascript library so let's uh do something with that date we can uh you can also console log it if you don't want to do an alert do some uh console.log and you can do date don't forget your semicolon at the end of every line. Otherwise, you'll get an error in JavaScript. And I would rather do uh, Firefox because I like its Firebug better. And if you don't have Firebug, then you can just download Firebug for uh, Firefox or Chrome. Uh, download it, it's awesome. I'll show you what it's going to do right now. So on your firebug down here, you're going to click on console. So if I console log the date, it'll pop up 2011 right there. So instead of doing alert, maybe you want to do a console log. That's the difference between them. Or maybe you want to do both, but that's how that works. That's how you do some error checking. We'll come back to that later and see how it's useful. But in here, Say you have a footer. Put the, we'll do this date in a real world situation here. We would uh, let's make a footer right here because usually you put a date in the footer. Put a paragraph tag in there. We'll do a uh, copyright uh, 2011 at mycoolsite.com alright 2011mycoolsite.com well instead of doing that typing that in statically you can do it dynamically and put in this date here so then if next year you have 2012 then you have to go through all your web pages and change that 2011 to 2012 in every page or you can just have jQuery do that for you so let's do a uh, inside this paragraph put a span tag in there we'll give it an ID of date and that's it so I have a span tag that has an ID of 8 and we're gonna target it in jQuery and we're gonna put 2011 in there so it will change every year and you won't have to mess with it so how do you target that div or this span tag as an ID of date and here's how you target it so you put a dollar sign curly open brackets uh, and then it's an ID so it's an ID, it gets the hashtag and you put date so we'll say the inner HTML of that is date so all the HTML that is inside of our span tag will be 2011 this variable because it equals 2011 that's what this is so let's comment that out just so you know the difference right now there's no 2011 uncomment that bad boy 2011's there. All right, well that's pretty cool. Let's uh, let's do something else. What else is beginners for jQuery? Let's say uh, make a div here. A div ID uh, blue box. Put a paragraph in there. Cool stuff. Maybe a picture. I got some images already in here. 
just for the shits and gigs. Alright, so let's go to our CSS real quick. I already have some uh, default CSS in here, but uh, let's target our blue box. Uh, we'll give it a width, 920 pixels, and we'll give it a background color of blue, which aqua is pretty ugly. Do something I remember. Alright. isn't really necessary, you don't have to do this. But I'm going to change my paragraph to white. Alrighty. So we got our blue box here. And now, let's, uh, let's add something to it. So in our blue box, we're going to, you can actually put HTML in here, and I'm going to say uh, before. And then we'll do an append to our div of blue box. Well, actually, it, it appended after, huh? So we'll say this one's after. So a jQuery just threw this paragraph after the very last thing in the uh, blue box. You can't see it in the HTML, but this JavaScript actually loads it. All right. So we can do this again. We'll say uh, this one's before. So instead of doing a, a pin 2, which puts it at the last, at the very end of the blue box div, we can do it right before the blue box div. So we'll say uh, prepend. Prepend 2. Alright, so now we got uh, jQuery importing this paragraph tag before everything in the this blue div and then we also have it do it put in this in or the paragraph tag after everything so that's one way of doing it and we also did it uh, differently here we gave that span tag an HTML changes all of its HTML so we'll do that example too let's uh Let's target our blue box and we'll change all the content inside the blue box to it pretty much erases everything. So whatever you want to put in here, we'll just put a paragraph tag and say hi. And that erases everything and then you'll just have hi. So HTML deletes everything and replaces with only what you have here. A pin 2 puts it at the end, pre pin puts it before. That's when one way of doing it. So then let's do a mouse click. Sounds good. Let's do a, uh, let's make an anchor tag. We'll put this right here and we'll delete this high. Make an anchor tag in here. I'll uh, we'll just give it a link to nowhere, hashtag, and we'll just put a uh, click me. Alright, so now we got to target this. So, this paragraph and anchor is inside of content. That's one way of targeting it. I could also give this an ID of click or something, and you could target it by a hashtag click. But I think I'm just going to say every paragraph that has an anchor. I'm going to put a click function on it, so whenever you click on it, it will do something. 
So let's do a bind. Click. This could also be like hover or mouse over, mouse out. But we're going to do a click and then we're going to put a function to it. Put your semicolon at the end of the line and then now we're going to type inside of this. So let's just uh, put an alert out just to make sure this click is working and we're targeting the right anchor tag. So we'll just put working. So when I click on this click me, it's going to give me an alert that says working. Awesome, it's working. So maybe we want to put this thing that we did earlier. So refresh the page. We have uh, just a picture and stuff. So when you click this, it should throw in a before and after what we did earlier. Cool. So that's some uh, basic techniques of jQuery. So the console log and alert, how to make sure stuff's running, how to do a click, um, how to do our date feature here. Really, jQuery is awesome. This is just the beginning of it. In my next video, I'm going to go over some animation. Animation to make, really brighten up your website, make it awesome, make it stand out. That's the basics. Let's uh you can also put the script tags, I didn't tell you. You can also put them in the header. But if you do this, then your browser is going to render the script tag first. And then it's going to render this script tag. And then it's going to load all your load all your HTML. So actually the user won't see any so say these two files are really huge. You had a shitload of stuff in here and it was doing a lot of work. So the user would be loading the, the script tags while not seeing any of the HTML. It would just be sent on a blank screen. So if you put this at the end, it would load all the HTML and then load the script tags. So at least the user has something to see before when it's loading. So it's best practice to put it at the end. So if you get confused doing any of this, uh, just go to the uh, jQuery website, click on the documentation, and it shows you how to do their whole library, how everything works, everything about it. So you click on Ajax if you want to learn some Ajax, um, effects, the animation, I'll show you how to do that next, um, manip manipulation, I showed you how to do some of that, append to, the HTML, uh, it shows you examples and how to do everything. So you click on .css, so you can change the CSS of a div, any of that. And if you get really stuck on a project, you can go to the discussions and make a new, uh, or the form, that's it. You can make a new topic and people will help you. That's what I do if I get stuck. I just add some, ask some nerd and it'll help me. But jQuery websites has awesome documentation on everything about this library. So if you get stuck, go to it, learn something. So that's basically it for this video. Um, I'm going to do some animation next, so watch my next video. Thanks.